Welcome to 13 Cubed. In this episode, let's talk about the basics of account authentication in an Active Directory environment. For people new to Windows Forensics, this can be a bit confusing at first. Luckily, once you see it, I think it'll make a lot more sense. As you can see from our diagram, we have three computers involved. We have a Windows Server 2019 domain controller named win2019-test-bm, and it's hosting the 13cubed.home domain. We have a Windows 10 workstation named win10-test-bm, which is joined to that domain, and a Windows 11 workstation named win11-test-bm, which is also joined to that domain. So here's the question. On Win11 Test VM, if we map a network drive to a share on Win10 Test VM and specify the credentials for a user on the 13 cubed domain, where will the resultant 4624 Type 3 be logged? And remember, this is an SMB network connection, so we do expect a Type 3. Will it be on Win10 Test VM, Win11 Test VM, Win2019 Test VM, which is the domain controller, or some combination of those? And will there be any other potential authentication-related events of interest? Let's find out. Okay, we're on Win11 Test VM, so let's get started by clicking the ellipsis and going down to Map Network Drive. Z colon will be fine, and for the folder path, we're going to type slash slash win10-test-vm slash testing. Testing is the name of the share that I've created for this demo. Next, we'll need to tick the box next to Connect Using Different Credentials, and then we'll click Finish. Notice that we're prompted for credentials at this point and the domain is already set to 13 cubed, so we're good there. Let's use the Bobby account and I'll type in Bobby's credentials now and then click OK. And at this point, we should have our mapped network drive, which you can see right here, along with one file in that particular share called testing.txt. At this point, we are essentially done with Win11 test VM. Now the question is, what should we see on Win10 test VM as a result of the actions we've just performed? Well, let's hop over there and find out. Okay, the current local time is 12.32 p.m., so let's go ahead and click refresh in the security log here and see what events we have around that time frame. And it looks like the first in our time frame is going to be 12.31.24. Notice this is indeed a 46.24. It is type three, which you can see right here, and it is for 13 cubed slash Bobby. So that answers that question. Also note the source network address right here, which is 192.168.10.55, which is indeed the IP address for Win11 Test VM. So our 4624 Type 3 is on the target system, the system to which we were connecting, which was Win10 Test VM. Let's go ahead and check the two logs above this to see if we have anything else. It looks like this is a 4624 Type 5, which is associated with services. And in fact, you can see services.exe right here. So we'll ignore that one for our use case. And then this is a 4672 special privileges. But aside from that, the 4624 type three was on the target, which may not necessarily be the box that's actually performing the authentication. And in our case, it is not the box performing the authentication. So what is, well, the domain controller. And in fact, the protocol being used for that authentication is going to end up being Kerberos because this is an active directory environment. The question then becomes, what will we find on the domain controller? Let's hop over there and check that out. Okay, let's go ahead and click refresh here, and then we'll go down to our 123123 event, which is in the time frame we're looking at, and check this out. We've got a 4768 within security, which says a Kerberos authentication ticket, TGT, which is a ticket granting ticket, was requested. Now let's take a look at the information we have here. The actual account name says Bobby. The user ID is 13 cubed slash Bobby. The service name is curb TGT, which is expected. The client IP address is indeed the IP associated with Win11 test VM, which is the 192.168.10.55 address. And that makes sense, right? Because that's indeed what we would expect to see on the actual device performing the authentication. So we have a 4768 for the Kerberos ticket granting ticket. Now let's check out the log entry right above that. And this is for a service ticket. You can see it right here. This is 4769, also within security. Notice the account name is listed as bobby at 13cubed.home. But notice under service information, we've got some interesting data here. Service name is actually listed as win10 test VM. This is the computer to which we were connecting. So it's interesting that we can see that there. And then under network information, we have the 192.168.10.55 address 
which is the computer from which we were connecting to Win10 Test VM. So lots of good information there. Now I will point out that auditing will need to be enabled for Kerberos authentication service to be able to see those 4768 event IDs and Kerberos service ticket operations to be able to see the 4769 event IDs. But assuming those are enabled, you can expect to see those on the domain controller servicing this authentication request. So let's recap. We mapped a network drive from Win11 test VM pointing to Win10 test VM. We authenticated using a domain account. The domain controller that we have in our environment serviced that authentication request. The 4624 type three was on the target system, the system to which we mapped a network drive, which was Win10 test VM, but the authentication related to that event, which was Kerberos within our Active Directory environment, was logged on the domain controller. I hope that helps clarify things. A lot of times you can read about event IDs and what is supposed to be logged where, but when you see it in real life and in real time, I think it really helps solidify how things work. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next 13 Cubed episode.